So, so the question is, I think it time has come, Honorable Speaker, where us as leaders of this country, and I think, Honorable Speaker, every part of Kenya, every corner of Kenya is represented in this house. So, Honorable Speaker, when we make our statements, anytime we are discussing national issues, we need to bear in mind that the whole of Kenya is representing this house. That's all I want to beg honorable members, that can we rise above our basic bipartisan approach to issues, matters political parties. The people of Mavoko, and I want to tell you for sure, very few cumbers at the houses demolishing that place. It is Kenyans who suffered, and these Kenyans come from all this part of country. It is Kenyans who suffered because they bought land. Yesterday, we did see, Honorable Speaker, the issue of Krema land in, in, in Rwai. People have built, they have been that land for over 10 years, 15 years, and then one day you are being told that title belongs to the Lima family. And you also have your own title. So to me, I think, Honorable Majority Leader, what I want to plead with you, and this is not for this government only, I think we can do a review of what has happened in the past, and we establish who are the original title uh, owners of the uh, land, and once we establish that of majority leaders move to the future, we make sure that never again in the history of Kenya we'll have one piece of land having more than one title. If we go that way, we'll be helping Kenyans, and this country will be on the right direction. With those many remarks, I submit, Honorable Speaker, and I was asked to help the people of Mafoko, those who have lost their houses, they must be. By you. Honorable Moses Kirima to make his contributions. Thank you. First and foremost is that uh, I pass my sympathy out to the people of Mavoko. Honestly, it's very sympathetic. It's a situation which every Kenyan should understand, especially the people who have been surviving on uh, Magia earnings. Because to put up a house to the extent of which I saw the kind of buildings which were being demolished, it was a sympathetic situation. But now, Mr. Speaker, sir, we must come to the point, who are responsible? Who made those Kenyans to suffer the way they have really suffered? We cannot just uh, appoint fingers to a few, because by the time one comes to Honey Land in Kenya, there is a process. I've been an advocate for quite a period, and I know very well that one, you must have an agreement to possess a piece of land. Pass it, uh, when, when we have uh, vendors and the purchasers, there must be an exchange of documents. Now, who used to own these documents without blaming or pointing fingers to who is who? It's true that Kenya has, is full of cartels. And in one or the other, there has been duplication of titles if you go to the land registries whereby you find a party as an original title, and then the others who come through other methods and they end up having other different titles. And now, if you are not careful enough, you are going to buy a duplicate title, and you are going to be a sufferer. So we cannot say that these owners of these houses be compensated, because the first question will come, by who? To me, I'm saying that those vendors who sold these pieces of land, because there must be agreements, where they came from, they must be scrutinized. And then whoever sold the rat, if he is in this house or not, if he has returned or not, he must be capable as it is in the Constitution. He must be liable. He must compensate those people who have lost because they have lost their life time earnings. One, for a date to deed, or for a, date, for, for a plan to be approved by a accounting government, you must produce a date to deed. But still, let's not forget, there can be a new influence whereby we make calls to the people who are approving this, who are approving the plan of the MBQs. And when you make calls as an, as an MP or anybody else who is of influence, I tell you, approval will be there. Then you will be promising that status will fall. So what we are saying is that court orders must be obeyed in one or the other, because without court orders being obeyed, I tell you, we are going to be in anarchy. We have a, this, is not a first, this is not the first or the last case which this house is going to hear. We have a similar case in KU, whereby there is a Kamai area, 
it's independent by very rich people. It has been because they have been promised that they are going to be uh, purchased or there will be negotiations. Even this area of which the court is, uh, we, Mr. Speaker, is saying that there will be no point of order. If it's come out, if majority leader has a house there, I guarantee him he's going to face same, the same problem. But uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, no, I'm not intended. I don't want to be informed. What I'm saying is that, like this Kerema issue, like this Kerema issue, if the family of Kerema is not willing to be talking with those squatters who are there, the court on us are to be open in despite of the consequences. So what I am saying is that the court on us are going to be, we must respect the court. We must respect the law as it is. But I don't want to be informed. And uh, the speaker said that there will be no court, uh, point of order. Kerema, so, Mr. Speaker, what I'm saying is that sympathy. Order, Honorable Kerema. Do you want to be informed? No, I'm not interested. No, because I know. Yes, Majority Leader. Honorable Speaker, I was seeking to guide my brother, Honorable Kerema, and he said he doesn't desire to be informed, and he is completely out of order. Because we are, the debate before us is the land in Mavoko, not KU and Kamae. Because the KU case, Honorable Speaker, unlike this uh, East African Portland case, is a case where KU has already agreed with the squatters that they will get a share of the land and they move away from the rest of the land. Therefore, it is extremely out of order for the member, uh, Most of the, the, the Honorable Member, to be misleading the house and indeed the country because that is what makes everybody feel that there is unfairness because even the people of Mavoko honorable speaker if they were able to sit and negotiate with us east african portland as quarters as genuine quarters to get a part of the land it has happened honorable speaker i can tell you i have bought land myself using those share certificates are you are you still on a point of order <laughs> just now 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 honorable speaker just to clarify i have bought land in Nairobi on a certificate but I knew the certificate is not a title doesn't confer ownership to me we went and negotiated with the owner of the land in Embakasi and the member for Mboni is here he can bear me witness we were squatters with him we negotiated with the owners of the land and we paid for value, we paid for the land and we ended up getting title documents. That is what we should be encouraging our people to do. When you occupy land that is not yours, negotiate with the owner, pay for value and own the land, ma but don't discourage anarchy. Ma majority leader, and ma majority leader, we, we, don't, we don't want members, members, order members. Don't seek to debate beyond your time under the guise of point of order. In fact, majority leader was just saying the same thing Honorable Kirima was saying, only that the context were different. I hear you to be talking about once a court issues orders, it must be obeyed and it must be enforced. And, and that is what the majority leader is talking about. So I overrule that point of order and I hope none like that will be raised again. You have one minute to conclude, Honorable Krim. To conclude my remarks, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, I have been informed by the majority leader, but he has misled this court, this, this, this chamber, the liberty. Mr. Speaker, with due respect to the submissions of the majority leader, he has decided to mislead this Honorable Court because the, KI, the KU issue is not what he has directed. I'm so much sister of the matter that there is a section of the squatters which has negotiated with the KU. And that section is already taken care of. But there is another issue, there is another part which has high-rise buildings. And that one is the contention where KU is chasing them and they are refusing to move out. I don't know what more Africa and these other people, I don't know if they are owners there, but it is held by esteemed members of this society. But I'm saying, Mr. Speaker, unless we take care and honor the court owners, as my time was taken away by the majority leader, we are going to have the Zimbabwe. Honorable Nelson Wamboka. 
And members, remember, this is a very important motion that has caused Parliament uh, to adjourn other business. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. So could you tell us who has title and whether there are titles and when they are Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I take this opportunity to join my fellow members and sympathize with the people of Mavoko who are now homeless because of a government they voted in power. Honorable Speaker. It is uh, surprising that the Honorable Majority Leader now is talking of respecting court orders. The same courts that said as the mere protests were legal and they went ahead and splashed tear gas, canisters and killed innocent members. It is surprising and uh, indeed uh, it's not only immoral but immoral to the person of the, of the majority leader. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, and uh, please uh, protect me from my leaders here. Honorable Speaker, it surprises me that before someone, before land changes ownership from one person to another, Ministry of Land has to be involved. It surprises me. It surprises me that even the county government must be involved. Honorable Speaker. In this case, we had a government led by a governor called Mutua in Machakos County who approved the constructions of the, all these houses. We had a minister in the Ministry of Lands when these things were changing hands. Where are they in all this? Where are they in all this? Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, protect me from the noise making majority leader. Where were they, Honorable Speaker? As we stand here today, the, min the President of Republic of Kenya, William Ruto, when he came to office and he was asked about this matter, he said, we have to find a mechanism, Honorable Speaker, that when the land, uh, there is land uh, uh, dispute, we must look at ways of a win-win situation where people must sit down and discuss. It came from the president. Where is he? Why is he living hustlers? Just because the other day, Azimio Brigade was in Kitui and indicated that Kalonzo Musioka could be our candidate, we are seeing all this. Why now? Don't panic. Don't panic, Kenya, Kenya, Kwanzaa government. Don't panic. Why, why now? Why now, Honorable Speaker? We have a rogue government that does not listen to the cries of its people. We must, by all means necessary, stop this government and make it to start listening to the cries Honorable, of Kenyans. Honorable Dr. Naomi Wako, what is out of order? Mr. Speaker, sir, is it in order for the Honorable Member to keep calling the current government the able government that is giving its best to this nation to call the government a rogue government and cartels and Honorable they know Speaker, the cause of all these problems her. and they know the cause of all these Honorable problems Honorable Speaker, in another forum I could substantiate to her what is the meaning of rogue nothing is working, not health care, not education not security, even in Baringo. That is wrong. Honorable, in Nelson, English Obra, terms. Honorable Nelson Wamboka, it is not within your powers to determine whether or not you are out of order. Honorable Speaker, oh. well guided, Honorable Speaker, well guided. Order. Oh, Honorable, Honorable Naomi Wako, you are going to speak after Honorable Wamboka and prove to them that uh, the government is not wrong. Yeah, Honorable Wamboka, proceed. Honorable Speaker, you cannot pull down churches and expect God to have peace on you. You cannot. That is why nothing is holding water now. This government cannot hold water because you cannot honestly, uh, school going children, exams have, are starting. How, what a heartless government. How do you knock down schools, Honorable Speaker? How do you put down mosques and churches, Honorable Speaker. And that is why it is a curse that is coming to befall this government. And we will continue talking. We will continue speaking. Where I come from, Honorable Speaker, there is a saying, where a hyena 
told a stone. Even if you keep quiet, you've heard me. I want Honorable Ichungwa to go and tell his government that even if you keep quiet, Honorable Ichungwa, you've The Honorable Mary Emase, you are recognized. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute to this motion. Honorable Speaker, protect me, I have to be heard in silence. Especially the leadership of the House on both sides. Would you consult in lower tone so that uh, the, the members can speak to the matter? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, land, I know land is a very emotive issue. And just from the onset, I also want to uh, sympathize with the families of Mavoko. I am a resident of Mavoko. My MP has just said he, he leads MP leaders, he leads thieves and all. I also happen to be one of his constituents. But Honorable Speaker, we all know that every land has an honor. Every land has a rightful honor. And it is rightfully so through registration. And that is why it is legally recognized as such. But land grabbing in this country, not only in Mavoko, in many other places that have been cited in the past, has been in the increase over the years. And what is saddening is that the people who suffer the consequences of land grabbing are not the grabbers, are not the powerful individuals who grab the land, either directly or through proxies, and they sell this land or allocate it illegally, of course, to innocent Kenyans. And that is the case which has happened in Mavoko. What does this mean? This is a manifestation of a failed institution or institutions. And I'm surprised when my friend Honorable Wamboka was speaking and is referring to this government of William Samoy Ruto the Kenya Kwanza government, yet we all know that these illegal allocations, grabbing, happened during the handshake government. I have just watched even some of the clips in the social media where some of the grabbers are actually pressurizing the, 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 the individuals who've been allocated land to go build on it. So, Honorable Speaker, what I'm saying is, Honorable, let the Honorable DCI... Honorable Mishimboko, what is out of order? Inform Honorable Emasi, you it cannot, happened a long time, from 2013. Honorable Mishimboko, you, you cannot inform Honorable Emasi if she does not accept. So if you want to make contributions, sit down, you'll make your contributions thereafter. Proceed, Honorable Thank Emasi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we have the oversight institutions. This matter ha simply needs to be brought to rest. Let ESCC, DCI, look for the individuals, the powerful individuals who grab the land because it is confirmed that the land belongs to Portland Cement. So the individuals who grabbed this land then allocated it to innocent Kenyans and then they are trying to politicize, use the innocent Kenyans as a politics. That is unacceptable. Let them be looked for. Let those individuals in the government offices, we are saying, saying people must take responsibility. If you're given an opportunity to serve Kenyans in any capacity, you must take responsibility. You cannot approve land that does not belong to that individual and allow it to be legally allocated to another individual to suffer. And it is even happening with many other private land. You find an individual knowingly, knowing that he has already sold land to someone else, continues to sell it to another person, to another person. In fact, the committee on land must look at the law and put very stringent you know, consequences, punitive, 
to deter any further, uh, uh, you know, illegal allocations and, 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 you know, preying on innocent Kenyans. And then we begin to use them as bait to politicize, to put ourselves into our cocoons, into our, you know, ethnicity, bring our ethnicity in it. It has nothing to do with that. Our institutions must work. People must... Honorable Joyce Kamene. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I would like to add my voice into this very painful issue of the Mavoko land. Mr. Speaker, let me start by saying two wrongs do not make a right. Indeed, people were there, they had settled, but for the government to decide to demolish all these houses. I think... Honorable Joyce Kamene, the majority leader is on a point of order. Speaker, my apologies to Honorable Kamene for interrupting her contribution, but I rise on standing order number 90 on declaration of interest, Honorable Speaker. Because Honorable Speaker, when I mentioned that I had been a squatter at one point somewhere, the member for Mbakasi West was very keen to listen and I clarified to him that it was not the matter before the House. And standing order 90, Honorable Speaker, if I read, it says, a member who wishes to speak on any matter in which the member has a personal interest shall, and the word is shall, first declare that interest. And the members can read the other provisions of that standing order. Honorable Speaker, I have noted with uh, uh, due respect to members that there are quite a number of members who have an interest in this matter who have contributed without declaring interest. And maybe to advise those who are contributing uh, after the Honorable Kamene to declare interest if you have an interest in this matter. We have heard from the member for Mavoko that they are members of parliament who are constituents in Mavoko and the Honorable Emase has confirmed that she, has, uh, she lives in Mavoko although not on the disputed land. Therefore, those Honorable Speaker, you must guide the House that those who have an interest, whether you live on this land or you have invested on this land, you must declare interest. And Honorable Speaker, because I came in after the member for Mavoko had uh, begun his contribution, I did not rise, I should have risen at that point to ask the member for Mavoko that he ought to have declared interest. Because he, have a, he has a personal interest in this matter, you know he has been summoned by the DCI on matters touching with this land. And he therefore ought to have declared interest before his contribution. Uh, I don't know whether he was summoned as a witness or as a suspect. He should have told us and informed the House so that even as others contribute, they may contribute knowing whether they are addressing either someone who is of interest to DCI as a suspect, as a witness. Hon Honorable, Honorable Speaker, I seek your guidance. Honorable Majority Leader, Honorable Patrick Mavoko, sit down. No, please sit down. You see, the um, enforcement of these standing orders of the House lies with the seat. So what the majority leader is, is doing is to, I think, assume that the speaker is not aware of standing order number 90. <laughs> the, the, fact of, um, uh, the fact that the MP for Mavoko was at the Directorate of Criminal Investigation is a matter of public knowledge. And uh, we, we would not demand he declares any interest unless that was the matter under discussion here. It's not the matter. Of course, he spoke and confirmed he's the member of parliament for the area. And he spoke with a lot of uh, latitude about the details of the matter. I think unless you believe there is some interest which has not been disclosed by him in the contribution, let us allow members to proceed. In any event, Majority Leader, the contribution by the Honorable Patrick Mavoko is now water under the bridge. We are uh, on Honorable Joyce Kamene. Yeah, under the standing orders, you don't, you don't raise, and, and this, uh, this is a caution to all members, don't stand on a point of order against a member who is done with speaking. I would consider it disorderly. Conduct, henceforth. Honorable Joyce Kamene, you will have your five minutes beginning now.
Thank you. Go now. Mr. Speaker, uh, the majority has told us to declare, yes, I am a resident of Mavoko. And my biggest interest are the citizens and the residents of, of Mavoko. And it is of great concern, and it is very hurting. It is very painful because I visited the scene and saw the heinous uh, way their houses were demolished. Young children, innocent children. In fact, the biggest concern right now would be the government telling us what it is doing about the children who are supposed to sit for their exams and nothing has been done so far. They have not even had any interest to know what the outcome of those children is going to be. The second thing, is this one a Portland? Portland, I think, uh, does not even sell uh, uh, cement. The work of Portland is to make sure it's selling all this land. And it has been selling for the last five years. Portland has received more than six billion. And yet, it is the one which came in front of the committee saying that it's bankrupt and it wants to sell this land that now has been, uh, houses have been demolished. Can Portland tell us who's using Portland? Who are these cartels that are using Portland? And have they become that evil to demolish a government that is talking about housing, housing? We saw houses worth billions and billions going to the ground. What are they go trying to tell us? We are saying this, the government has to compensate the people that were living in that land. It is the same government and it has refused, uh, uh, it has refused to devolve the land issue. All the titles are gotten from Nairobi. Why is it that uh, those transactions are not done in Machakos and Mavoko? Because we also have our departments there. It is simple. We know the cartels that are behind this land and what they are planning to do, but they should remember this land is in Ukambani. And it is ours. And we are demanding it is ours, the people of Machakos County. And it is the CS in this current government who authorized and who okayed for those houses to be built. And this matter started in 2013. And we know very well what was happening in, in 2013 when two buddies who walked hand in hand in State House coordinating. I think when that love was there too much is when they decided to do what they have done. And that is why our people are suffering. I don't care what tribe they are. But they, do, they should not be treated the way we have seen them being treated. Can the government come up and do a plan of compensation for the people of Mavoko and the land that is remaining? Let it be reverted back to the county government because it is our land. And it is the government of Machakos who will decide on what to do. There is nothing like Portland. Tuliwapatia Shamba and the Shamba is ours as Machakos County. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, honorable members, how I wish you could have the spirit uh, Honorable Makali Mulu spoke with. Because he spoke to a solution we can deliberate upon and provide in future. And, and so, henceforth, could people tell, tell us whether there are dual titles or there were single titles? If there were dual titles, when were they issued? If they were dual titles, were both issued by the Ministry of Lands? And if so, what responsibility should the ministry have to the people? And on most of the lawyers here, you remember the doctrine called administrative estoppel. If they built on the property, and I'm, I'm just saying this for guidance, I fear even when we adjourn the house to discuss matters of national importance, we talk as if we are just playing politics. I mean, we are talking of, of Kenyans. 
those, those people I saw in, in, in Machakos, I cannot say with clarity on which side of the political divide they voted. I only saw Kenyans. Can we address issues and as a House of Representatives come to solutions? Were those houses built without approval, planning approval? Is it possible that if there were planning approvals, they were given without titles? Were those services being supplied there without approval? And if there were titles and approvals, who were involved and to what extent are they culpable or liable for the damage caused to those Kenyans? Is it true that some of those houses were built using loans? Is it, and, and if so, is it possible banks gave loans without proper documentation? If they did due diligence, did the Ministry of Land confirm that they duly owed those titles? And if so, how do we deal with them in terms of the monies they still owe those financial institutions? I mean, I mean, let us talk around those areas. Remember the Lands Ministry is digitizing title. Could that be a solution we could be talking about? Let us talk issues. May I have the Honorable Rindikiri Mugan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I truly would like to sympathize and empathize at the same time with the people of Mapoko. I don't know whether they are canvas or not, but those Kenyans whose property was demolished. Mr. Speaker, as you have guided, settlement on a prime piece of land in Kenya, particularly in an area of high value, Mr. Speaker, is not something that people just walk in and invade. Mr. Speaker, these are not IDPs, nor are they squatters. These people, from the characteristics of the buildings that we saw, they are people with means. They are people who have a bit of education. They are people who are well versed, even with the kind of property they need to develop. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I'm inclined to think that these people know what they were doing when they are settling on that piece of land. But Mr. Speaker, if you go to the Minister of Lands, and we have all been there, Mr. Speaker, there is what is called the original title and the, and the plan. Mr. Speaker, if you go to the survey of Kenya, and that's why I believe that it need to start, it will provide the original ownership of the land. Mr. Speaker, there is none of the movers of the motion or the purport and supporters who are disputed that the land does not belong to East Africa Potter and Cement. What many of us are raising here is demolition. We need to start dealing with the own, original owner of the land and when this land was allocated to the original owners and whether this, the, uh, the, 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 the people who settled, they were aware uh, that this land belongs to East Africa Potter and Cement. Mr. Speaker, as I'm talking to you, and this is on record, Mr. Speaker, I have three primary schools whose land has been grabbed and the title issued. One secondary school called Silimoni Secondary School, six acres of land and nine titles. If we start talking about the legality of titles, yes, there were nine titles. But the original owner is Salomon Secondary School. So the possibility of the people who acquired thereafter the Portland Cement could be having titles which are not the original titles and which have been given out there by land glovers and blockers. Mr. Speaker, if I'm not wrong, this case has not appeared last month. 
where the court orders of eviction were issued. I believe there were eviction orders which were issued before, but they were never attended. attended. Honorable, Honorable Mugambi, I heard um, the mover of this adjournment motion say that um, the case that was between the rival owners, East African Portland Cement and another company, was um, dismissed on technicality. So the issue of ownership never rose. I also heard him say there is no order for eviction. In fact, that was the complaint he placed before the House. Do you have the eviction orders? May, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. But what I'm saying is there could be lacons because what we saw is the tailored representation of this, uh, 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 the, the houses represented by the uh, party leader, Kalonso Musiak, on the tailored. And that matter was also thrown off by the court. Meaning, Mr. Speaker, the court arbitrated, the court issued judgment based on the evidence that was presented by South African Portland Cement. And therefore, it was declared that they are the owners of the land. Mr. Speaker, what am I saying? This land and the people who bought this land, they both. You love one minute, Honorable Indikiri. These people who sold the land to these Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, they are known to the, those people who bought the land, and from what we are hearing from the media, the, they are lended to come forward, and they say so and so, sold them the piece of land. Mr. Speaker, when these people come forth, now we shall separate the beans from the stones. We can't sit here and start blaming the government. Government has nothing to do with this. In actual fact, what we are telling the government to move with speed, ICC, NIS, all of them, they move with the speed and they bring to book some of these culprits. I saw some Kamba members, leaders, issuing a statement. And I'm seeing also other Kamba members issuing a statement. What a contradiction. Are we talking about the same thing? There are some. Honorable Charles Ngusia. Yes, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for gi giving me this opportunity to add my voice on this dehumanizing act which has been committed by Kenyans, Mr. Speaker. Let me join by actually sympathizing, or rather empathizing with Kenyans who faced this atrocity of highest order. Mr. Speaker, we can all agree that the manner in which this demolition was done was totally dehumanizing and people executors actually committed atrocity of highest order we have ever witnessed in history of this country mr speaker sir when you look at the issue we have been apportioning blame to very few people who are not even uh, in any way under any capacity of assigning land like uh, the, the, the current member of parliament of Mavoko, Mr. Speaker. We know it is county government which gives absolutely everything, licenses when you are doing a construction, and this issue started way back 2013. We know who was governor, we know who was the minister of land, we know the people who were in government, and without even apportioning a lot of blame on current uh, leadership, Mr. Speaker. We need to know how and when and who executed this matter from the beginning, Mr. Speaker. Without even answering a lot of questions, we know the people who are supposed to add or uh, rather answer this question, my, the Mavoko people actually faced, Mr. Speaker. Let me be say, Mr. Speaker, I witnessed this matter and I personally I have a relative who lives there. The child, or rather the pupil, the students have been going to school there. They are waiting for exams. And we have to see a way of relocating them to other schools, Mr. Speaker. And we have not even seen our president actually giving us directives on how these people are going to be compensated, on how 
these students who their school has already been dem demolished, how they are going to sit for exams, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what do you expect from our parents who has invested on these students for almost eight years? And watch just these students, the education going to the train. You can't expect that student even to sit an exam and pass, Mr. Speaker. This is atrocity, and we need to deserve condemnation of highest order, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, are you we saying, saw even... Are you saying any school was demolished? Their schools were demolished, churches were demolished. Public or private schools? Private, private schools were there. Okay. And Mr. Speaker, some of these students actually are going to sit for exams from 6th of next month, Mr. Speaker. We need to find a way of how we are going to compensate them, even in exam marking, Mr. Speaker. Churches were demolished. Mosque and many other structures, Mr. Speaker. I wish we benchmarked on how NSSF back in Tasia handled the situation when the lad was actually invaded, and I'm one of the owners of the Tasia plots, Mr. Speaker. We bought the lad illegally, but Mr. Speaker, NSSF re resulted did, 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 with Did Kenyans. I hear you right? You, you said you did what? <laughs> yes, we got the lad illegally, of course. Uh, the title belonged to NSSF, but NSSF reasoned together with the Kenyans. We came and uh, found out that it is not worthy actually to demolish the existing buildings. You can have a way of negotiation instead of demolishing. Now we have gone back to zero. Mr. Speaker, who is gaining here? Is it the president? Is it the government? Is it, we are just losing everybody. And when I saw people actually who were crying out there, you cannot even apportion and say that they voted for Kenya Kwanza, they voted for Azimio. This issue needs to be totally depoliticized and come back and find a solution on how we are going to issue these Kenyans with at least compensation, Mr. Speaker. And this should come directly to the Ministry of Lad, because they are the ones who issued title this, Mr. Speaker without arguing this, and let us not all... Oh, Timothy, Tority. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute on this very, very important motion that has been brought the, before the floor of this House. Honorable Speaker, to begin with, when we're in this floor, when we're in this House, Honorable Speaker, our fundamental role is to represent our people. And it doesn't matter where those people come from. We are here to represent the citizens of this country from every corner of this republic. Honorable Speaker, the issue of Mavoko and the matters of evictions in Kenya indicts the entire land regime in Kenya. Honorable Speaker, there is something called sanctity of ownership, sanctity of title deeds in this country. Honorable Speaker, it, 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 it puts us off when Someone was, when, uh, goes to the, the, uh, the Ministry of Lands, does a search, is told the land is valid, proceeds to construct property. Thereafter, it, that person is told that that property is not properly documented. Yet we have only one ministry in Kenya, the Ministry of Lands, the ministry that issues title deeds. What I speaker, these are innocent Kenyans. These are Kenyans that are borrowed loans. There are Kenyans that have gone to the banks. They have secured the loans in banks. There are Kenyans that have built this property using mortgages. Thereafter, they are evicted in the pretext that the entire process of ownership of the land was not proper. Honorable Speaker, I want to speak for those people because it doesn't matter whether I'm in this side of, of aisle or the other side. The issue of protecting our people cuts across. Honorable Speaker, some people must be held responsible. If they are in this house, then those individuals must be held responsible. Honorable Speaker, if they are, they are in the land ministry, then those individuals must be held responsible. Honorable Speaker, there has been a joke going around this country that if you need to buy, imagine the level of mistrust that you've had in the Ministry of Lands. 
There, there's a joke going around that if you want to buy land in Kenya, one, you consult a lawyer. Number two, you call, consult a surveyor. Number three, you consult a land valuer. And then number four, you consult a drunkard. Honorable Speaker, that is an insult, an indictment to the land regime in this country. So, Honorable Speaker, those people and this government, we must see a way of compensating those people. It doesn't matter. Those people must be taken care of because it is, it is unfortunate that innocent Kenyans can be, their properties can be demolished. Children are not going to school. Charges are being brought down. Honorable Speaker, I am in this side, but I am here to represent and defend the interest of every Kenyan, irrespective of where they come from. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me this opportunity once again. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, it is unfortunate that uh, over 25,000 people have been affected by this. And when we are here, uh, we should be human and feel for others. Uh, it is unfortunate that this case has been going on for many years, and this is the time that the court has ruled that uh, the land belongs to East African Portland cement, whatever. And that means the innocent Kenyans have never known the truth of the matter. And matters to do with land, Mr. Speaker, you know very well, that has affect, it has affected so many Kenyans, so many people, including many of us here. We have been conned by people, and as you think of purchasing a land and growing your wealth, you land into the wrong hands. And that has happened to these innocent Kenyans. And as I stand, I support them and I feel for them. And especially women, children, school-going children, and the many churches that have been destroyed, the mosques that have been destroyed. And Mr. Speaker, if we cannot talk about the cartels that are behind this, then we are not doing justice. Even if we stand here, we debate, we make noise. We must call out the cartels. We must call out the corruption that has been going on in matters, land, and title deeds. Mr. Speaker, everybody knows that you may be holding your title today, and another person will also have almost a similar copy. And a time comes when you realize that the title that you are holding has somebody else is also claiming ownership over it. And that is why, as a country, we have been suffering because of corruption. And today, in this government, our Kenya Kwanzaa government, our president has said that he will not condone any corruption. And that is why today, even as we speak as members of parliament, as we stand up for these innocent Kenyans, as we fight for justice to happen, we must also call out cartels, people who are behind this. Mr. Speaker, I know very well, even if I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't know a lot about this particular land and what is happening around there. I am sure there are faces behind this corruption. There are faces behind this chaos. And innocent Kenyans are sleeping out. Imagine the season that we are in. It is raining. People are suffering. And children are supposed to sit for their exams. And I'm sure expectant mothers have nowhere to lay their heads. And that is why as leaders today, we should condemn what has happened and also stand up for the innocent Kenyans so that justice can be found. However, those who are behind this, from the Ministry of Lands to the people who are there and leading these people, the corrupt leaders who are there, must be called out so that we know the cause of the problem. When, when something happens, people blame, blame the government. Why should Kenya Kwanzaa government be blamed today when this has been going on for over 10 years? We should know the root cause. We should know what happened at that particular time for this to happen today. So even if we say that it has happened in the presence of Kenya Kwanzaa, the root cause of this problem must be known. And that is why we are calling all the people concerned, so that they can bring out the individuals behind this, so that this can be known to others. 
that it is not the government, but it is the cartels who are behind this and who are putting them in this situation. Mr. Speaker, it is my prayer that one time all the cartels in this country, because it is not only on land matters, there are cartels everywhere. The other day we were talking about pyramid scheme and everybody is crying. Kenyans are losing their monies. Kenyans are suffering because of cartels who are trying to, to steal from them and who are trying to frustrate their efforts. I stand with these people and I pray that we will soon bring out the cartels and the corrupt leaders in this particular game. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Naomi, and thank you for your tone of address. It's very healing. The Honorable Fatuma Mohamed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. I stand here to sympathize with the people of Mavoko. Mr. Speaker, my sister who has just spoken said that this problem was caused by the past regime. But I would like to inform the House that when you become a member of parliament, you don't run away from mistakes that happened before, if there were mistakes. The current government should not look for handshake problems, claiming that these things happened during handshake. That is a irresponsible statement. That is inconsiderate of those people who are suffering, who lost their money. I saw a mother with a one-day-old child crying and cursing the government. Which government does she know? The government that took oath today is the government that she knows. So we cannot run away from this. Instead of the government doing what they did, the majority who were there, who owned that land with those title deeds that they have today, did not know that that land was grabbed or not. And so as a government, we should have looked into how do we solve the problem. Because now the houses are down. These people are suffering. Then this person who claims to own the land comes and says that we want to sell the land to you and we are giving you the first priority. Mr. Speaker, that is mockery and ungodly. If such a scenario was supposed to be considered, then they should have done that before they demolished the houses. So what they are doing now is just adding insult to injury. And these kind of things are going to happen. Next day we'll hear of another house. Next year we'll hear of another home. We'll hear of another land that was grabbed or not grabbed. The bottom line is, as the government sits down and demolishes these houses, how about those other houses that are there and the title deeds are three or four out there? This reminds me of a school in Langata Primary. And I remember there's a hotel next to it. And I remember there was a story that that land did not belong to the owner. What happened to that situation? That hotel was not brought down. That school was not compensated when their children or the parents, when their children were tear gas. They were not compensated. But the same people are sitting in the office. The trade here is, I was supposed to declare, I come from Nyatike sub-county, I own a clean land. I live in Lovington, I own a mortgaged house. So I have no interest in Mavoko. But I am saying, when it affects you, you defend. When it doesn't affect you, you throw emotion and tantrums and blame the previous government. Those who have spoken here spoke with emotions and threats and bad words and unsympathetic words because their houses were not brought down. But let us behave human. Let us behave godly and think of these people. We cannot say that they will not be compensated. We did not grab their land. No, as a government, we swore to protect the Kenyans. Those who, own, who, who had houses, they are Kenyans. So is the person who claims to own the land today. So what should be done in case this government does not know that there is something called arbitration? We should bring the person claiming the land and the other person saying he has a right title deed and arbitrate and see the way forward so that majority of Kenyans do not suffer. And if I may use, there is a rule of the jungle that the majority win. I think the person who claims to own the land today is one. Majority were demolished. In such a scenario, we should listen to the majority. The economy is hurting already. And we cannot just give one person priority over poor, innocent Kenyans. Let us be sympathetic with the Mavoko people. And as a government, you inherit whatever you got from the previous regime because you did not come with any constitution. You, the same constitution you found is the same constitution that will, gun, will, will guard Wanainchi. So I beg this government 
to consider them a vocal people and compensate them. It was not their mistake. It was a mistake of the government. And the government is one. The government is not Uru Kenyatta or Ruto. The government is not Moi or Kibaki. The government is the government of Kenya. So take responsibility and compensate these people. And again, guard future issues not to happen again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, today we are sitting up to nine. And going by your numbers here, I can assure you, you are all going to speak. I'll even add some of you time. So don't worry. Honorable Kakai. Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for giving this opportunity. And first, uh, my sympathy to the affected families. What is important, Mr. Speaker, I have been seeing how casual the legislators have been discussing this matter. Having worked with refugees across the globe, first it starts with IDPs and it ends up to be with refugees. This is a real grave matter. And in the interest of public good, majority are affected. And many of us, in fact all of us, we swore to protect our people who actually elected us. We've seen schools destroyed, we've seen even churches destroyed. We as a nation, how do we expect even the Almighty to bless us if we are even bringing down his churches and mosques, an example? The many children, the women that have lost their home. It's very painful, Mr. Speaker, to get to your home where you had your bedroom and you can't even identify it. And we are sitting here with posturing, you know, some political posturing, forgetting that when we sit here, we should legislate, we should debate for prosperity. Because today, you are sitting on that side of the aisle, tomorrow you're on this side. So I would like us to really, in the spirit, even on bipartisan, I expected that the majority leader, when he was seated here, not to take a certain position, which actually sort of despises the humanitarian component, Number two, this same government, including myself who sits on the housing committee, there is a drive to increase housing, and we are talking about affordable housing. These are Kenyans who have actually taken loans. They have put their uh, uh, homes there. Some of them are retiring. Where do you expect those Kenyans to go? Why kill them that, uh, that, that early? And uh, I think it's unfortunate that the majority leader has stepped out there is a prominent uh, verse that he normally uses, come reason together, especially during the campaign time. How comes this time we could not reason together? What was difficult to sit down as a national or county government with the affected persons and reason together? Now, most important also, Mr. Speaker, ignorance has got no defense. If the county government has been enjoying the taxes that have been collected from these Kenyans, it means that there is a document that is binding the sanctity of uh, title. So again, the persons responsible, the governor who was there then, the lands minister who were there then, we talked about uh, digitizing the, the, the title deeds. What happened? They should be held responsible. We want to create a responsible leadership. And to me, Mr. Speaker, sir, we should use this opportunity to set an example because this has happened in Mavoko, tomorrow it will happen in Kiminini, it will happen in uh, Lugari, it will happen in any other uh, place in this republic. So we should use this to set an example such that the public good is protected. And by saying this, Mr. Speaker, I do not mean that I actually condemn land grabbing and condemn curtails, but we must use this as an example so that it doesn't happen again. Otherwise, if we continued like this, We've created IDPs, our own country on this continent that is creating its own IDPs. Yet, we are respected within the continent as a country that really uh, respects democracy. But we are creating IDPs and historically, where you've seen refugees, refugees are created from the first step of creating IDPs. Please, let's work in the interest of the public but let's also hold the ones who are there responsible in the interest of the public good. And what I mean is 
all the people must be, uh, they must be sort of compensated, all the people who are affected. And the first person is the government, I mean the county government of Machakos because they've been collecting taxes. This is not the time for us to take political posturing. We must come together as legislators, as leaders, with that humanity and make sure that Kenyans don't suffer anymore from this and we should stop it so that it doesn't happen again in this republic. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Honorable Catherine Omanyo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is staggering to just watch families that have worked, fought very hard to the hilt to also own something in their mother nation. We have seen uh, clips of some Kenyans abroad who even work on shoddy jobs and deposit or bring money at home so that when they finally, their contract is over and they finally decide to come back home, they can come home to something. But these are Minority the, the Kenyans who have I hope you are not leaving. lost their houses in a second, having built a house for years. And the Kenyans whose houses have been brought down, the churches, every other institution that has been brought out, down, it is the land grabbers who sold to them. These land grabbers are connected to the land registrar. The land registrar is connected to the county planners. County planners are connected to every other person who gives that stamp called stamp duty. Even now, Kenya itself, for them to get that money, they know that this tax is coming from this parcel of land. And finally, the title deeds are issued. So it is a cartel. One person knows the other and knows the other. And if there is a commission, everybody has their percentage. The Kenyans whose houses have been brought down are not land grabbers. So where are these land grabbers? And what has happened to them? Are these Kenyans safe where they are? Are these Kenyans ever going to get back what they have built for their entire life? Are these banks that we hear some of them are still paying a loan going to give them some uh, sympathy and not go for auction? And even if they went for auction, what are they going to Because if they take a loan against that house, then it is the house that has been brought down. I just weep in my heart and hope that this government will quickly go dash into this and help these Kenyans who are now IDPs or refugees because they are now like uh, strangers in Jerusalem, in their own nation. It really is a heavy thing seeing one of our colleagues here with his sunny disposition trying to give us other things playing around joking around i'm talking about our majority leader i do not know if he has a home somewhere if one day his home will be brought down i think he will change how he talks mr speaker as a leader in this nation wherever anything like this happens it is good that leaders don't rush into wanting it's, to it's revenge the in the house. it is good that leaders sit down and talk y yes, in cohesion yes, in peace Peter. so that people cannot lose order, order, it should be win-win honorable manio your time will be added what is out of order Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I stand to raise uh, uh, Order 35 that there's no quorum in this uh, honorable house. So we can't hear you. Uh, uh, what? what uh, just a minute. What is your name? Honorable George Sunkuya. Sunkuya, I, I cannot see you, so I cannot notice you. Are Thank you, but I am. So, so I've not phone. recognized you. Just sit down. Uh, uh, just sit down. Just sit down. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just said as leaders, whenever we hear somebody has bought land, maybe it was illegally done or legally done, these people have settled with their families. A child who's going to do their exams in a few couple of days, knowing that I'll be going to nowhere, or in a small one room somewhere where she was used to her own bedroom maybe, or we are going now to stay with our aunt. The life is no longer the way it used to be. 
we are affecting our future leaders, our future generation by our actions that come because of some revenge or something. We do not want leaders with a lot of vengeance. Let us leave vengeance to God. But these Kenyans must be compensated and, and, and a decision needs to be made to at least get them back to their feet so they can continue giving back to the nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Ms. Shimboko. You will Asante sana mwishimua speaker. And, and, and let me just declare that I want to give lady members first priority because of those other obligations you need to go to. So male honorable members will, will need to bear with us for some time. Honorable Mishimboko. Asante mwishimua speaker. Mwishimua speaker tunajua katika taifaletu tuna ile mambo tunaita dhulma za kistoria za mashamba. Na mimi naamini kabla hiyo Portland kuwa na umiliki wa ardhi ile ardhi ile lazima ilikuwa ya wenyeji na najua hata tukichakura chakura tutajua ya kwamba hawakuipata katika hali ambayo inastahiki na mimi ni sema mheshimiwa speaker serikali ya nyuma iliyokuwa ni serikali ya mheshimiwa uhuru kenyata na pia rais alikuwa naibu wa rais kulikuwa na kesi kama hiyo kule likoni ya shamba la waitiki na kwa wakati huo viongozi waliwaita wakaazi ambao walikuwa wameingia katika shamba lile la Waitiki na wakaweza kufanya mazungumzo na wakatoa fidia kadhaa na serikali ikatoa fidia nyingine na wananchi hawakuweza kufurushwa kwa nini mavoko walifurushwa na kugandamizwa katika haki zao za kimsingi Jambo la pili juzi na jana mheshimiwa naibu wa rais tuliona akitetea wakaazi wa Nyandarua ambao walikuwa wanataka kufurushwa na shirika la railway alisimama kidete na akasema hawatafurushwa na watazungumzia mazungumzo hayo kwa nini mavoko waliweza kufurushwa katika hali ambayo si hali ya hadhi na sio hali ya utu nataka niseme serikali iko na haki ya kuwapatia wakenya makazi iko na haki ya kuwapatia wakenya elimu vipi makazi yatabomolewa vipi shule zitavunjwa vipi makanisa pia yatavunjwa na na hali tuko na haki ya, ya kuabudu katika katiba yetu ambayo tuko nayo sasa kama serikali kwa hakika nimemnukuu sana mheshimiwa rais wakati alipokuwa akifanya kampeni akisema ya kwamba serikali yake haitagandamiza mkenya kwa njia ya kufurusha kiholela katika mashamba vipi sasa amepata kura amekuwa baba wa taifa la Kenya anagandamiza wa Kenya katika hali kama hii ambayo si ya kimsingi. Tumeona kina mama wanavyopata shida, tumeona watoto wanavyopata shida. Tunaambiwa hata kama ni kufurushwa, yani njia ambayo inatakana ifuatwe ni njia ambayo italinda hadhi ya Mkenya, italinda heshima ya Mkenya, italinda maisha ya Mkenya, italinda usalama wa Mkenya. Swali ni kwamba kulikuwa na usalama hakuna. Tia gas tuliona zikirushwa kila mahali. Je, kulikuwa na hadhi swali ni kwamba hakukuwa na hadhi vyombo vilirushwa rushwa kila kitu kilikuwa kinaangushwa kila mahali na hakukuwa na hadhi yoyote ambayo ilifuatwa kwa hivyo nataka kusema mheshimiwa speaker sisi tunasikitika kama taifa ikiwa sasa Portland Summit wanasema wanataka kuuza ardhi wakati wamefanya hasara kubwa kama ile kuatia dhiki wa Kenya ambapo hata kuna mkenya mmoja aliweza kujitoa uhai kwa sababu ya kufikiria gharama ambazo wametumia katika kuwekeza kujenga makazi na familia yake jamani sisi kama wa Kenya tunazungumzia kuwapa watu makazi alafu kwa upande mwingine tunavunja makazi ambayo wameyajenga kwa miaka mingi katika hali ngumu sana hali ya kuchukua maloni kuchukua ile kiingereza tunasema mortgage kina mama wamecheza vyama wamecheza katika vikundi vyao kupata pesa alafu kwa siku moja tu wanakuja kufanyiwa dhulma kama hiyo sisi kama taifa la Kenya lazima tujue sheria ni msumeno inakata mbele na nyuma haiwezi kuwa sheria tu itafanya wakati ni mavoko lakini kwa sehemu zengine sheria itakuwa inaangalia mkondo mwingine jamani leo ni mavoko kesho itakuwa ni sehemu nyingine ya taifa la Kenya hawa wa Kenya tuwapeleka wapi wakati uchumi 
wa Kenya ni mgumu. Mwananchi anashindwa kupata chakula. Mwananchi anashindwa kupeleka mtoto shule. Leo anakuja kubomolewa nyumba ambayo amegaremu karibu milioni shirini na kwenda juu. Jamani hilo alikuwa suluisho. Sasa wanarudi wanasema watauza hayo mashamba. Kwa nini serikali haikufikiria tangu mwanzo? Anayetoa stakabadhi za shamba ni nani? Ni, ni wizara ya ardhi. Wizara ya ardhi ni nani? Ni serikali. Kwa nini hawakujua kama kulikuwa na utepetea na kulikuwa na ufisadi na wakafuatilia jambo hilo kabla ya kufurusha wa Kenya katika hali ngumu kama hiyo na kuweza kutesa, kutesa kina mama na wanafunzi walioko pale. Ni masikitiko makubwa sana lakini mimi nasema lazima wa Kenya wasome kwa sababu wa Kenya wengi huwa hawataki la kuambiwa wanataka la kuona. Wameona sasa Kenya kwanza ilipowafikisha sisi tuliwambia ingekuwa ni mheshimiwa Raila Honorable Susan Kiamba as Honorable Anne Murata prepares and Honorable Esther Pasaris. Thank you Honorable Speaker for giving me time to contribute to this very important motion. First and foremost, I would wish to empathize with the families in Mavoko for what has happened to them. My first point, Mr. Speaker, in pre-independence Kenya, unless to kona wazungu hapa, there is nowhere where land was empty land. Every land in Kenya in pre-independence pre period belonged to people. And it is important to realize that when, when parastatos came up, people only gave land for particular purposes, for people to use it to benefit their own people. And they never gave away land with full rights of ownership. It is very strange when we see people using the law to own land, deny the real original people their rights to own that land. I'm even very surprised, Honorable Speaker. Two weeks ago, the president was in Tana River, in the, in the Tana Delta. The people in Tana River, there is the land being owned by Tada. The president gave orders that the local people be allocated that land. And then Tada can have the rest. Why couldn't that happen in Mavoko? Are people of Mavoko animals? Are we not Kenyans? Do we have sacred cows in this country? Because even Tana River, there is that particular order that the land belongs to Dada, and they are be, the president has given a degree that those people should be allocated land. I believe the same should have happened in Mavoko. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I've heard many presenters say that people had, the demolitions happened because the land belonged to grabbers. We are the houses also of grabbers. Didn't Kenyans have time? Our legal authority to establish who was the grabber and who was the individual landowner. Why was there all this impatient? Because when you stand up and say this land was from grabbers, I believe it is the role of the government to identify who are grabbers and who are genuine landowners, Kenyans, who deserve to have this particular land. You know, one thing, Mr. Speaker, I find very wanting is a lot of leave service of solidarity of Kenyans. When we say we want unity, unity has to be demonstrated through what we do. Because I find it very difficult as a, as, as a, a person coming from a community for anybody to tell me about unity when you are killing my people or killing Kenyans. And especially killing Kenyans with a bias. Because now we know for these people who had demolished, they had their houses demolished. Some of them are now suffering. We already have a man who committed suicide based on that. So, Mr. Speaker, I think it's in order. I think it's in order for the government of Kenya, whether national in collaboration with the current government, to compensate for the people of Mavoko. And as, as other people, whether they are squatters or whatever the case may be, as other people are being given land, I believe it's in order for those people who are evicted in Mavoko to get their land. And lastly, uh, you know, I find it very difficult we are being treated the same way Kevoi, Chief Kevoi of was treated. Because Portland, by the way, where Portland bought the land from who? We would want to see their, their agreement. 
Or did they, did they come here with land? We would want to see the agreement of Portland. They bought the land from who? Because if the original communities was there, how did they come to possess the title deed? Because we cannot have institutions that are the owners of the title deeds, the owners of the land, while the local people suffer. Honorable Speaker, I think it's very dehumanizing. A house of this owner to start thinking very tribal. Or very, how do I put it? With a lot of uh, uh, partisan party lines. There is no Kenyan who is Kenyan blood that is Uda. Neither Kenyan house that is Asimio. We all need to fight for these Kenyans. And I think if this parliament cannot fight for these Kenyans, I don't know where else they would actually get justice. So I believe this house must get solutions. We can't sit here and mourn. I'll give you one minute exactly. Honorable Murata, I'll, I'll give you extra minute. Don't worry. So, so can you conclude? Thank you. Honorable Speaker, this is one of the highest decision-making organs in this country. And we need either to have the minister to come and give us an explanation, or we need to make a decision and inform the powers that be that these, our people, need to be compensated. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Anne Murata, you, you have seven minutes. You've really waited for very long. So, so you should be speaking for five, but you'll have seven if you can speak. Please do. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I first of all want to empathize really with the people of Maboko just before I bring in my input. And uh, I've listened to all of us as we share this issue in this parliament. And I think it's a time that we become honest with one another. And I think the debate that we are having now needs to change its course. That us as the leaders of this country need to be very honest with ourselves and speak the truth. Because you see, when somebody comes here and tells us that the land in, Uka I mean, in Ukambani belongs to the Kambas, I'm a neighbor of Kenyatta University and Jomo Kenyatta University. You cannot tell me to come here and say that that land belongs to the people of Kiambu. It does not. Jomo Kenyatta University is the land of the people of Kenya, in as much as it is in Kiambu. So you cannot come to parliament and start telling us the land that is in Kamba belongs to Kamba. It does not. It is a land of the people of Kenya. That one we need to be in agreement. So when we come here and start bringing issues of land belonging to who, some of us will be the highest beneficiaries. But this is not true because what is in Kiambu belongs to the government. And now what I'm trying to say is this. Uh, we have had issues of land, and talking honestly, all of us in this country know that we have had a big problem of land in this country. And what happened in Mavoko is very clear and was put on the table, and all of us are on TV, are on social media, we are seeing what is happening. And uh, we know all what has been happening in this country over the matters of land. And in particular now this land that is at hand. We have seen somebody speaking to these people and telling them, Taito ni karatasi. So what was this guy trying to tell these people? Can you do this as fast as possible? Because when it comes to issues of demolishing, there will be people who will come to support you. Because when you keep it as land, it will still revert back to the owner. So go and sell it. We have seen the governor who was there then addressing those people and even the company itself putting a poster there and telling people this land belongs to the Portland uh, cement. So what I'm trying to tell ourselves is that can we have an honest discussion? Because here we are talking about lives. Like now we have students there who are supposed to do exams in the next few days. I am in the committee of education in this parliament. We need to be sitting and asking ourselves, these children need to sit for the exam. When and where and how? This is what we need to be discussing in this parliament. But when we come here and start putting volumes and talking, trying to buy a royalty with our people and we actually know what is happening. When I see all the leaders from that region speaking very strongly and very highly, and at the back of their mind, they know the true story. Because this one has been, has been done by the, rogue, by the rogue government officers that we have. 
who cheated our people and even made them buy land that didn't even have titles and even go ahead, went ahead and approved the constructions. These are government rogue officers and they are there and they are known. So when we start dragging in even the name of the president, that president is not working in the government of Machakos. There are people who have been given work there to do. So the people we need to be addressing are people like the ESCC, the DCI. They need to rush and get the people who did this to the innocent Kenyans and make them pay for every pain that they have caused these people. Because again, we cannot continue every year stalking the same thing, the same, doing the same things the same way and expect different results. So what we are saying is that the people who sold this land, who are making sure they govern this parliament properly so that this land, is, this land now becomes a big issue, are the same people that need to tell us who sold this land to these people. Who is this that was approving the selling of this land? When we see all these people brought to the books, then it will go on record in this country that during the reign of Kenya Kwanzaa government, all these stories came so can we have an honest discussion? Can our leaders from that region start speaking the truth? Because they know the truth. And they, have the, they know who sold the land. They know how it was sold. We are seeing them involving people and telling them, go build. Because when you have put a construction, no one will come there. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I would also want to say the name of God is being invoked in all these things that the church has been constructed. I'm a Christian, and I believe that we speak of a God of order. Our God is a God of order. Even him, when he created the world, he put the boundaries for rivers, for oceans, and for lakes because he knew there is a purpose for everything. That land is for Portland. Cement is not for building a church, and I'm a Christian. So stop bringing the issues of a church was demolished because the church had to be put in proper land. But then the church owners are not to blame. The people to be blamed is the person who sold that land to that church. And that person needs to be condemned with the strongest word possible. And the people to give us this answer are the people from that region, the DCI, the, the, the ESCC. They have an answer and they need to answer this question. So the likes of Robert Moy, my friend, need to come out clean and tell us who is this in that region that sold this land to these people, knowing very well where it belonged. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Wilbur for Soundo. You, you. I didn't hear anything out of order. Uh, chair, thank you, Honorable but, but Speaker. On, honorable, honorable Robert Mbui, you are, you, are, you are a leader in the House. Can you be dealing with that issue when uh, the Speaker is done? I doubt so. Uh, honorable, honorable Speaker, Sondo, proceed. thank you for this opportunity. And let me thank um, Honorable Mbui for, high, for bringing this matter for debate in the floor of the House so that the people of Kenya can start getting to know a few issues here and there. And Honorable Speaker, let me also take the cue from the majority leader when he rose that members who are standing to speak must declare their interest by in pursuance of standing order 90. Honorable Speaker, let me declare my interest that this is a sector, an area I've practiced and I've trained and practiced for over 40 years, so I know the genesis of the problem at hand here. Second, Honorable Speaker, let me also declare I and the previous speaker, the uh, member of parliament for Machakos County, sit in the Committee of Trade Industry and Cooperative, and we, have some pre we are privy to some documentation that East African uh, Portland Cement came and laid before us in the committee. So, Honorable Speaker, as I speak here, I want to avoid the politics, I want to avoid the specifics, and probably deal with the wider concept at hand here. And I must sincerely thank Honorable Bombui for bringing this matter to the fore because it's not the first time, it's not the second time, and it's unlikely to be the last time. And this, Honorable Speaker, the genesis of this problem lies back into around 1990, 1990, 1991, and 1992, when there was the infamous reward for people under the last and um, the days when you are transiting from one party state 
to, to multi-party state. And then by then, Khan was threatened as a party on their strange hold on the leadership of this country. At that particular moment, Honorable Speaker, it was reward time. And I can tell you, Honorable Speaker, I want to give you a very honest example. What shocked me as a valuer, then National Bank was, an, was, was giving out loan free to Kano Kingpins. And one of the land they gave a, a loan to was a roundabout of Jogo Road and Outer Ring Road. So I just want to lay the genesis where the rain started beating us. They gave out, somebody processed a title, superimposed it on the roundabout of Jogo Road and Outer Ring Road. The moment they got the money, they were given the loan, the company they used to get the loan, the records at the registrar of companies were destroyed immediately. So five years down the line, when the loan was not being serviced, we were contracted to do evaluation for auction purposes. With the skills we learned at the university, we found our, our, ourselves at the roundabout of Jogorod, money had been eaten and left. So everybody took cue. The Kanu honchos, the Kanu youth wingers took, uh, took advantage. And therefore they went to any land that was perceived to be unoccupied, to be vacant, and, and uh, in a way, what we were calling then, grabbed that land. That mirrors what has happened in respect of the land held that is subject matter here. When East African Portland Cement as a company acquired was given whichever way, through acquisition, through donation, through public guarantee, is now immaterial. They acquired a very chunk, chunk of land, and they were supposed to use that land for mining purposes, to mine raw material for cement making. And as my colleagues have indicated here, that in the understanding, was only supposed to mine, once they finish and they exhaust the mine, they were supposed to return the land to their rightful owners, who I do not know who are those rightful owners, yet this land had long been occupied by the settlers. How the settlers got the land is you and me and everybody knows. So obviously, the settlers had land and they had title. And the title, Honorable Speaker, as you are aware, ownership of title is exclusive. You can, not too many, not too people can own title. Honorable Dr. Undo, because, because you are an expert in the field, I'll give you three more minutes. So, Honorable Speaker, that's why it is important. So, that's what I'm saying. The way the white settlers acquired land is a story everybody knows. Nobody challenged that title then. When they were living, they had the right to transfer that title to any other party that was willing to meet their demands. And that's what happened. Honorable Speaker, after the, after, after the 1992 case, as I was saying, people emerged in this country, the so-called the land buying companies, cooperative societies, and that's why they would walk into any empty va vast of land, entice gullible Kenyans who want somewhere to settle, issue them what they were calling a share certificates. Many cases, the matter was regularized properly. In many cases, the matter was never regularized. The issue of the, national, the, issue of the East of Portland cement, the matter went all the way to the National Land Commission to determine the ownership. It went all the way the courts de determined. I can only sympathize with the buyers, innocent buyers for value. And this brings into question now, what do we do with racketeers? What do we do with profiteers? What do we do with those because of the social influence they wield, the political influence they wield, they are able to entice and have people purchase land knowing that there's no genuine title. That's why the people now, as a country, we must deal with ruthlessly, perpendicularly, and once and for all. And this presents a case example. 
That's why, Speaker, I've sat here today patiently because I was doing research. As you listen to people talk, it's like an interview. It's a questionnaire that are filling for me. So, Honorable Speaker, this is where now we need, this is where the, all the security agencies, this is where the government now needs to weed out this group. We have the other parcels of land, the Krima land. We have so many other such cases in this country. I therefore urge soberness. And I want to ask the Committee of Lands and, uh, and Physical Planning, now this is the time. They need to show their expertise in land matters, land administration matters, land information management system matters, to resolve this matter once and for all. Finally, as I, as I conclude, government is a government in perpetuity. Government is a government in perpetuity. The current government cannot, ex, uh, cannot, uh, bla cannot remain blameless. These things were done in the name of the government. During the campaign, we were very categorical that the suffering of people through our enforced eviction, we need to address. And I thought, Honorable Speaker, there was actually an act of parliament on how to deal with eviction, whether it is through illeg illegal eviction, lawful eviction, if there is in such an act of parliament, I want to throw upon, again, the Lands Committee to develop that bill so that whenever we even have disputes, there must be a humane way to evict people. We are talking about housing. Any houses, any structure that houses people demolished, that's reducing the housing stock in the country. We cannot run away from that fact. So, Honorable Speaker, I want to urge my colleagues, <clears throat> this should give us an impetus to change the law, it should give us an impetus to strengthen our land administration system, must give us an impetus to debate what constitutes title, what constitutes sanctity of title, what is it are you looking for? It's not just the space that matters, it's what is the interest you hold in respect of that space that matters. So for all those who want to go and buy land, failure to consult a consultant, an expert at that particular moment, might be cheaper for you, but cheap is, is expensive in the long run. There can never be any substitute in consulting a consultant in whichever way, and an expert in whichever way you do. Thank you, Honorable Bombui. We hope now whoever listens has listened, and as you said, even if they don't listen, we have talked to you. It's upon now to pick up from here and resolve these matters once and for all. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Dr. Ivo Bara. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to also contribute to the motion. Mr. Speaker, at onset, I want to condemn in the strongest term the destruction of property. I'm not calling it demolition. I'm calling it destruction. Because what I saw, I would not wish it on my enemy. Mr. Speaker, yes, I've listened to the expert. But the question is, the kind of infrastructure that we saw being demolished in Maboko, surely you could not put in all that money knowing very well that it is not yours. Members here have told us that they paid taxes, they paid rates to the county council, to the Ministry of Lands, everything, they were doing the things which is supposed to be legally binding. But nevertheless, properties were destroyed. Mr. Speaker, I cannot reconcile myself with what I saw. The broken people, broken men and women, looking at their life savings going down into ashes. Mr. Speaker, up here in Upper Hill, whose land is that? All those buildings that we have in Upper Hill, whose land? They were given by the government. Railway here, whose land was it? Government land. Go to Eldorate, ADC, whose land was it? Government land. My question is, who is Portland Cement? 
Portland cement belongs 52% to the government of Kenya through Treasury and NSSF. 52%. 42% belongs to Lafarge. 6% belongs to Kenyan. Therefore, 58% of that land belongs to Kenyans. Who is government? What do you call it? Of the people? For? For the people. The government has the moral authority to solve the issue of Mavoko. They have the ability to solve the issue of Mavoko. They didn't have to wait for those properties to be pulled down and then talk about arbitration. When do you arbitrate? How could the judgment have been made, Mr. Speaker, today and the following day, we have the bulldozers on site? It means that somebody had the script of the judgment. Somebody had it. And somebody was waiting to do what they did. Mr. Speaker, as I finish, this is the time that we call for compassion. It was lucky. This was a time that people should have looked at their consciousness when they were pulling those down, those houses down. The schools, the timing, exams are about to start, schools are being pulled down, churches are being pulled down, the timing, people are going for Christmas and you are homeless. Being a predominantly Christian country, we celebrate Christmas. And we are pulling down houses three months to Christmas. Where are they going to go? Mr. Speaker, I did not see the compassion. I did not see people's conscience being pricked. Mr. Speaker, I saw cold-hearted Kenyans destroying homes of other Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, my question is, what happened to our value system as a country? What happened to our value system? It's a time for reflection. And as my colleagues have said, we need to look at this matter soberly as leaders of this country. Thank you very much. I call for arbitration, and I call for people to be compensated for loss of property. Thank you very much. Honorable David Mboni. Honorable Esther Pasaris, you will follow. Honorable David. He said Mboni, not Pasaris. I said Honorable Esther Pasaris will speak after Honorable David Mboni. Thank so you. proceed. Your time is running out. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Let, let me also join my colleagues in sympathizing with the situation in Mavoko. Mr. Speaker, we all know that uh, land acquisition in this country is very risky. Most of the land, actually in the east, eastern part of um, uh, Nairobi, <coughs> uh, has no title deeds, and there is a lot of uh, uh, double allocation. Mr. Speaker, Minister of Lands, Minister of Lands, I think, is the most corrupt minister in this country. And if this country, if this government, really want to fight corruption, the way they are saying, they should fight corruption in the Ministry of Lands. A lot of people have lost money because of what is happening in the ministry. In fact, I'm our victim. I bought some land, put up a building, Later, I realized the land did not belong to the person who sold to me. But the person was very needed to me because he came back and told me uh, <coughs> to buy the land, and we agreed on the price. I'm actually still paying. The Minister of, Planning, uh, Minister of uh, Lands, a few years ago, there was a government attempt to digitize land records. But because of la land cartels, this process failed completely. And this is the process which we thought uh, is going to clean the land reg registry. The records were supposed to be digitized, put in a computer uh, 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 software form, and if you want clearly to check uh, <coughs> uh, you, uh, any title deed, you could be 
uh, be able to, 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 to verify. Um, let us face the fact. The Mafoko land was donated to East African port land by the Kamba community. The port land did not buy the land. The land belonged to the community. Now the agreement was the, mine, uh, the factory, the East African uh, port land, to mine the limestone and refer back the land to the Kamba community. So we still expect that land to go back to the community. We are aware that uh, under the privatization program, East African Portland is one of the companies which this government is willing to sell. This company is, government is, is selling. And we are aware the factory, the machines are obsolete. So the target is the land, nothing else. Uh, but we are saying as a community, the land belongs to us. In 2014, the then Governor Mutua wrote to DCI and asked the DCI to investigate what was happening in Mafoko land. But the DCI did not do nothing. In fact, I'm, I'm surprised now they are calling people left and right to come and record statements and are choosing people who are very innocent that they sold the land. What did the DCI do at the other point? Because at that point, if they intervened, what we are seeing, the strain we are seeing in Mavoko should not be happening. Because they should have been able to stop the land uh, division in that hotel. Who approved the plans, housing plans? Is it the ministry? Is it the county government where the governor Mutua, who was complaining, the land is being divided. Is it the, 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 the county government which approved the land? Those are the questions we need to ask ourselves. And instead of looking for few small people, we need to get the big people into this. In fact, I'm sympathizing with my colleague uh, 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 Macau for being accused, I mean, an honorable member. How does he sell land? So what is happening? <coughs> What government, actually what, what even, even ask more, me more is, you pull down out people's houses. Then tomorrow you tell them, I'm selling the same land, and I'll consider you, I'll give you the first priority. Who does that, seriously? Who does that? The government should not have negotiated with the people who have already put their houses there, and sell them. I'll give you one minute. So the government should have actually negotiated with those people, sell the land to them, and leave their houses comfortable. Now people are, he are helpless, homeless. People have put their money, their, long, their, their lifetime savings, got loans to put houses, and now they don't have houses. Seriously, which government does that? Therefore, uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, these people need to be compensated so that at least they can live a decent life. Thank you very much. The Honorable Mark Mwenje. Oh. Sorry. Uh, Honorable Pasaris, would you indulge uh, the Deputy Minority Leader, who was just confirmed today to speak thank you. for you? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, yeah. for the opportunity. Let me... First of all, Honorable Speaker, support uh, Honorable Mbui and thank him for bringing this very important motion. Honorable Speaker, when this government was elected, during the inauguration speeches, especially of note by the Deputy President, he promised to Kenyans that the days of inhuman, uh, inhumane uh, demolitions and evictions will come to an end. That was quoted, that was him speaking. Honorable Speaker, there was nothing humane about what we saw in Mavoko, Honorable Speaker. It is also important that I remind those in government that claim that 47% of those who voted came from Mount Kenya, 
quite a significant number of people who were demolished were from Mount Kenya and voted for this government. So that is something we must always remember, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, there was a court case. This court case did not run to its natural conclusion. Normally, there is an eviction order, there is a notice, there is a period that is given, Honorable Speaker. This did not happen. And Honorable Speaker, whenever we've seen this kind of orders, there's always some form of notice, some reprieve, a chance to go up to a higher court to be heard. This was not the case, Honorable Speaker. And more importantly, Honorable Speaker, these kind of matters create a security risk. Because what you've done is destruction of wealth. One day, you have people living in a home, have electricity, you know, the basic necessities. You have water, food, shelter, clothing, a livelihood. And the following day, all that is thrown away. This creates a risk to even security, to our own security agencies there. That is something, and Honorable Speaker, I want to expand beyond Mavoko. Because these kinds of, of, of court orders uh, for evictions, they are all over. Especially from where I come from in Embakas. But Honorable Speaker, we've been able to resolve some of these issues. Tasia of note is an area where people settled. There was a land dispute. It was determined. And the people there were given an opportunity to regularize. We have an area in Mailisaba known as Mwengenye, Honorable Speaker, that people were given that chance. This, this issue of people coming, especially where they were misled by our own government and, then, and ended up buying land because they were conned. Kenyans have been given a chance to regularize that. Our own majority leader today spoke of a similar instance because that is the common, especially in Embakasi. People have acquired land through uh, certificates and through other means, but eventually they've been given a chance to sort some of these issues. Honorable Speaker, the failure here is by government, by the land officials, by the administration, and you find it even in our areas in Embakasi, where there's collusion through the government, through the county, through the administration officers, and Kenyans end up getting defrauded. So most of these people who acquire this land, Honorable Speaker, acquire it believing genuinely they are acquiring a genuine title where they can build their lives, Honorable Speaker. And that is something that must always be considered, um, Honorable Speaker, especially in matters where you are going to destroy the livelihoods of Kenyans. Honorable Speaker, this government has been talking about low-cost housing. How can we talk about low-cost housing and we are going to destroy the very houses Kenyans have saved? to build with their own money that they've saved for, especially for retirement. So, Honorable Speaker, some of these issues, some of these court orders must be interrogated. Some of these court orders are, cannot be implemented, Honorable Speaker. The issue that happened in Roy, the court case that, uh, that, that determined the matter in Roy, has given an opportunity for those residents there to try and sort out that issue, Honorable Speaker. As I conclude, Honorable Speaker, it is important that we recognize we must regularize, uh, allow the position for regularization of land so that those members who find themselves in trouble can be given an opportunity to sort their issues, Honorable Speaker. For the case of Mavoko, I believe innocent. You, did you say you want one minute or two minutes? You'll be given one minute. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. For the issue of Mavoko, they are innocent Kenyans, bona fide buyers who acquired, who genuinely believed they acquired good title for those parcels of land. And I believe, Honorable Speaker, in that case, it is the government, it is the land registry that was at fault, that guided those Kenyans, allowed them to build their lives there, and they must be compensated. This is not the time for politicking in this issue. And Honorable Speaker, I must state, 
we will not allow demolitions. Even in my constituency, Honorable Speaker, we have some similar uh, uh, orders, Honorable Speaker, and we must ensure that we are given a chance to regularize those parcels of land because if we continue down this trend, Honorable Speaker, we are going to destroy the lives of Kenyans. We are going to lose a lot of wealth, Honorable Speaker, and this must come to an end. Let this government be held to account and keep its promise that these demolitions, which they said will be uh, will end with the, with the previous government, will be a thing of the past. Let them stick to that promise. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. The, the Honorable Esther Pasaris. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the sir. Person, the Honorable Member who keeps uh, shouting point of order, you know the procedures of the House, how to seek intervention. It is not by shouting point of order. In fact, shouting point of order without seeking intervention, which must be recognized by the speaker, is itself disorderly conduct and is punishable. Proceed, Honorable Pasaris. Well, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this motion. First of all, I would really like to say that uh, as a country, as a government, we failed not just the people of Mwavoko, but there's so many historical injustices in this country where houses have been demolished even here in Nairobi and we've never been able to find a solution. People pick their pieces, some lose their lives, some get sick with cancer or mental health because when something so emotive like having yourself dragged out of your house with bulldozers, having all your property destroyed, having your children look at their lives crumbling down right before your eyes and seeing their parents hum, uh, looking totally helpless, that shows that we have failed. We have failed and failed, and we continue to fail. So what would be the solution? We can, play, we can give each other, we can blame each other, we can say it's this one or the other one, but at the end of the day, we are all Kenyans. We fought for independence. We got rid of the colonizers. We took possession of our land. We didn't take possession of our land for certain people. We didn't take possession of our land to frustrate people, to harm people, to injure people, to economically destroy people, and including financial institutions. In this country, if you want a loan for your business, you go with your title. Today, banks are not really able to lend you money on titles because they don't trust your title. Now, what happened in Mwavoko, I think, was actually a miscarriage of justice. What should have happened, and I really want to appeal to the Chief Justice, who is a mother and a woman, I think we need to stop making decisions in the courtroom when it comes to emotive matters like land, which involves a huge community, and actually take the courts to the grassroots. Take the courts and have an open court. Nothing stops them to go into the grassroots and actually see what is happening. Because when they make these decisions in the courts, right, some of the decisions that they make in the courts, like now we have a decision which will affect and impact a number of households in Nairobi. And they have, the residents of Nairobi and the Karima case have been given up to the 31st of December to move. What I want to ask is why can't we have a multi-sectorial approach so that when you have matters of land which involve community, we bring, because the, the judiciary keeps telling us, let's go for alternative dispute mechanism. The judiciary itself can initiate that dispute, uh, the arbitration on, and the alternative dispute mechanism and actually bring the Ministry of Lands, bring in the, the police, bring in the community, bring in the judiciary, and together we look at how we can safeguard uh, the dignity of the people that we are supposed to represent. The people in Mwavoko, I understand where they are coming from when they say this was our land. We gave you the land to do business because you will bring some economic gain for our people. This land was sold to innocent Kenyans. The county government gave approvals for construction of houses. The, the services were provided by Kenya Power, provided by the Ministry of Water, provided titles were provided by the lens, uh, Ministry of Lands, and then all of a sudden you wake up one morning and you say this land belongs to us. So I was thinking with all those 4,000 acres of land that East African Portland has, surely couldn't they have actually figured out how to compensate uh, the people or to actually 
give this two, three hundred acres of land and say, this is your land. We have actually survived and made profits out of this land. So we will give you this land. You will, we will end this court battle, you know, so that the people can actually live in peace. The land that is in Nairobi right now that we're talking about with the Karimas, I really would like the government to seriously look at the Dungu report. We came up with the task force. We came up with the Dungu report. This was supposed to cure the industries that came up with land. And up to today, we've never implemented the Dungu report. So I want the government to have a humane face. As we're saying, we want to build houses for the people. We want to give dignity to the people. How do we give dignity to the people and the promise of dignity when today we erode that dignity by bulldozing houses and schools and churches? Even if those churches were, were built in land that was not theirs, how was that church built with a title? How was that church built with uh, approvals? So all of us are culpable. And I think it's important, as a member of the Committee of Lands, we shall do what we can, but we need... You need one more minute? Uh, Mr. Ad, Speaker, ad, adjournment I, motions go yes. for five minutes, yeah, except with the leave of the House. <laughs> and I assume the House is uh, the Speaker. So you have two minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is, a, this is an item. The land issues are emotive, and we need a multi-sectorial approach, approach. We need to get to the grassroots, and we need to stop actually harming our Kenyans. Our Kenyans need to be engaged in a manner that is dignified, because that is what the government has promised. And we are all part and parcel of that promise, because we are part of the government. So we need to make sure, whether we are opposition or we are in government, that together, we uphold the dignity of the people because it's not enough to come and say we feel sorry for you because the pain that they're feeling is continuing and is growing and mental health is real we're going to have a lot more challenges if we continue being so so harsh and rough on the citizens of this country so I pray that the president and the various uh, cabinet when they meet they address this issue because really business cannot actually thrive when the people of the community are actually being destroyed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Engineer Paul Mzenko. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to contribute into this debate. From the, on the onset, I want to empathize and sympathize with the people of Mavoko constituency for that uh, barbaric action that was taken upon them. Uh, it's, it's a pity that uh, a lot of people may have lost their lifetime earning through this act of carelessness. And Mr. Speaker, I want to condemn the whole act with, on the strongest words possible. And I, I, I also want to condemn a section of members who have, who took it who trivialize, try to trivialize the, the, the whole thing by associating the grabbing of the land so, so reported to be uh, having been occasioned or orchestrated by the Wiper uh, Brigade by claiming that uh, the elections of 2022 were financed by the proceeds from, uh, from the money that was purportedly obtained from this a sale of land. I think this was a careless and, um, and a mockery. It was a careless statement and a mockery to the people that lost uh, their, their money, their, their, their earnings. Mr. Speaker, the uh, two wrongs don't make a right. And uh, assuming that uh, there was a problem in that area where the titles were mixed up or some authorities somewhere made a mistake does not qualify uh, the people that are affected to have been hurt in the manner that uh, they were, they, it was done to them. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have examples of uh, land where inadvertently people were uh, misled into buying a land that was not in the right title, but later, um, later, People were able to sit down, negotiate, and, uh, and a, a case in point is a land opposite, uh, as, 
uh, opposite Bil Bil Balore along Old Airport Road, where I know Kenyans were, uh, as, were, were, were duped to buy land, which had been uh, apparently is been issued by the government to the then Scano sympathizers, and the owner then resurfaced later, and I'm, I'm private to the information that uh, indeed the owner was an Indian owner, a private owner, agreed to negotiate with the, the new landowners, and they were able to agree on a middle path or a middle uh, ground where they negotiated for the true market price at that particular time, and they were able to pay the owner and the owner vacated possession of that land. So in this particular case, where the land uh, purportedly belongs to the government, the, the alternative would have been to negotiate with the landowners and the developers and just agree on a market price, and then I'll ask them to be able to, uh, to buy the said land. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, the idea of a government uh, demolishing property of its own people, for whatever reason, is in itself scaring the investors because the, the, the individuals don't issue uh, titles. Titles are issued by government, and the government cannot recede on titles that they have issued themselves. So that, uh, in that case, uh, I want to say that this government is proving to be insensitive to the fact that uh, when you own up and say that uh, these titles that uh, the government issued are not true titles, then an investor who wishes to invest in Kenya is definitely going to be, to be 